first of all, thank you very much for having me here and giving me an opportunity to speak. Uh, I think SMEs are a very important sector within our country, within the current situation that we're facing as a country. Uh, and I firmly believe an SME is the engine for growth uh, for any country, and especially in a country like Sri Lanka, where despite us having big corporations and, and uh, you know, other modes of uh, revenue growing in growth in the country, SMEs are Sri Lanka's backbone. And, uh, you know, if SMEs succeed, and if we give an opportunity, opportunity and a space for SMEs to succeed, we will, as a country, get out of this situation much, much faster uh, than we ever came to it. So with that, I thought, uh, I just first of all, I want to thank both of my previous speakers, uh, Jayantha, uh, who I've known for a very long time, and uh, it's always a pleasure to share a panel discussion with him, and uh, Roshan as well. So leaving me very little to uh, sort of touch on. But of course, I want to thank, thank ISACA for taking the initiative, and USAID as themselves, for actually doing some of the work which I will touch on uh, very briefly as well. Uh, in trying to understand the SMEs and some of the challenges that they are facing in terms of cybersecurity and data protection. Uh, somewhere last year, July 2022, uh, USAID, in fact, uh, did a research in Sri Lanka targeting the SMEs. Uh, and uh, basically, this was around trying to understand the digital maturity of the SMEs in the country. Uh, but I thought there were very few interesting findings within that report, which I thought I'd highlight uh, for you guys and bring to your attention as well, because I'm sure some of these problems and challenges uh, maybe you are also facing. So interestingly, um, Roshan also tried to grasp, grasp the issue. I myself try to understand what is a definition of a SME. And, uh, very interestingly, the, uh, the USAID report provides a uh, sort of statistical figure. It says an SME is an enterprise, uh, less than 300 employees, about turnover not exceeding 750 million. And of course, the manufacturing sector, uh, a, a little different. The goalpost, 200 million and 750 million. Staff size, about 50 to 300. Uh, and when you take small, as Roshan very correctly said, uh, small is very different because when you deal with different countries uh, when the definition of a SME uh, vastly differs. Whereas if you're dealing with, let's say, an American organization or an Australian or anything in the European Union, uh, SME is probably the size of a listed company here, uh, whereas they are an SME. But here you can see it's, it's about 16 million uh, rupees or 16 to 250 million, 11 to 50 employees. Uh, of course, this criteria varies. Uh, the reason I wanted to put this across is the why is the next slide. And that is, it made some very interesting observations, uh, which I think it's important to discuss. And I think it's important to look at when we are discussing it in the panel itself. Most of the SMEs do not follow any technology governance, meaning that uh, any sort of IT controls is not apparent. Maybe there is, but certainly it's not apparent. And standardized methods to implement, monitor technology uh, were lacking. SMEs do use ERP platforms, CRM platforms, but most of them don't store these technologies in the cloud and would prefer to do it within their premises or on-prem. So this is sort of a very legacy thinking that has come into organizations if you see most banks, they still are very slow to uh, you know, move into cloud. Uh, but it's interesting to find out that even SMEs had some of the same views on that. Well, all SMEs have access to internet, and that was very encouraging. And I think the stats themselves said that uh, the more SMEs are connected and using digital systems, the more digitally mature they are, uh, the better they are at doing business. So that's, that's good. Now, 74% of businesses in the SME sector don't reference any international best practices, especially ISO 27000, which is sort of considered the baseline standard 
uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, information security, or even before we talk about data privacy. So that's that's a very interesting insight, uh, and, I, and I'll share some something across the ponds also, but I'll get to that. So the, again, very interesting. And then, of course, they spoke about various subdomains, but I want to highlight one thing here under the cybersecurity subdomain. An overwhelming 88% of SMEs confirmed that the enterprise had suffered a cyber attack. 88% of the surveyed enterprises. Majority. We don't know what those data are. We don't know where those data are. We don't know to what level that has been. And that, for me, is a bit startling. So what, what we understand is, yes, SMEs do understand some sort of IT governance, IT infrastructure is important and gives them a business advantage. But certainly, the proof is in the pudding. And I'm, of course, very thankful for USAID for giving me this uh, insight as well. Uh, certainly, that maturity needs to come about. And I'll take an example, because very few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to address an Australian SME organization. And they have a very different view now of cybersecurity and data protection because of some of the incidents they've had to face. Within a week, sometimes, they get thousands of attacks. And if you read up a little bit about what's happening in Australia right now, you'd see that the situation is quite alarming, so much so that the Minister for Cybersecurity, they, yes, they have one, uh, Claire O'Neill, uh, is actually made several pro proclamations in Parliament. They've actually amended a few reg regulations. Uh, they brought, you know, enable class action lawsuits to be brought upon some organizations, simply to ensure that the robustness or the digital ecosystem is protected. And SMEs are disproportionately impacted. And if you talk to most of these guys, they're quite worried about their business. They're quite worried about losing customers. They're quite worried about their revenue getting impacted. And this is the reality. So because this incident happened, because of a major incident that did happen a couple of months ago with Australia, but it can happen to any country. And why this is important is it can happen to you and it can affect your businesses disproportionately. The amount of fear and uh, apparition that these SMEs had in Australia in particular uh, was quite alarming because they want to do something now. They want to talk about data protection, they want to talk about uh, ISO, they want to talk about policies, procedures, all of which you know, some, uh, Roshan discussed as well as all of these standards that we talk about. And, and they did have legislation. So I think therein lies the push. And this is why awareness is important. Uh, understanding why these factors are important is vital. And a lot of the times, the question I get asked is, you know, this is not my core business. Because I have a lot of SMEs locally as well as globally. And First question I get is this, you know, this is not part of my business. Why do I need to invest in this? And I think if you look at Australia, the answer is apparent. And some of these insights sort of give us an idea also that more effort from all of us as, as IT professionals, as, as a person who spends a lot of time speaking to SMEs, awareness, education, I'll tell you, I have gone the extra mile to sit with some of these organizations and make sure that at least the basic controls are in place. Very quickly, because I am pressed for time, and um, I think the panel uh, needs to start as well. Why data privacy is important? I mean, how it was discussed? The legislation was discussed by Jantha. Uh, but I'll just tell you very quickly why. The why and why are the advantages? Trust. More and more, your customer is online. Uh, especially if you are doing a B2C service or even a B2B. Customers are online. Online trust and trust within a business entity is important. And in this modern day and age, Jayanta spoke about enabling trust through the legislation. Trust can be enabled through technology. But trust is the currency that I'm sure all of you as SMEs deal with. 
most of your most of your customers are reference customers or you know referrals you don't do much advertising so trust is a key currency and trust can only be enabled within the trust your systems and the trust your processes and you trust your people if a customer has given you data and you haven't done uh, a good job maybe maybe through negligence or maybe through actually not being aware the customer may not trust you again and i think for the folks in this room that's important trust it mitigates few things one the regulatory impact right now as if you take sri lanka the personal data protection act pdpa for short is there uh, we see in the horizon a uh, cyber sec act might also come about we don't know how the uh, environment may change but certainly as jayanta mentioned in his speech the pdpa applies to everyone and therefore because of this change and because of the impact it may have to you as an organization it's always better to prioritize data protection data privacy and cyber security because we can't talk about data protection without cyber security so that is important and that is an aspect that you need to look at cost of a breach um, certainly in other countries cost of a data breach cost of a cyber security incident goes into millions of dollars and for you like i mentioned as your compart uh, you know as your partners in australia told me once a breach occurs it's very costly for them to get out of that situation they need to hire experts they need to hire uh, you know people to do the recovery they need to talk to a regulator they need to talk to the customers and sometimes these are things they don't know how to do and then of course customers because of the regulatory atmosphere there customers can demand compensation there are situations where certain smes went bankrupt because of incidents so certainly it is important to focus on privacy at least from a cost or a cost effective point of view reputational damage reputation is very critical to all of you guys most of your businesses are built on reputation and trust as i mentioned previously if the reputation suffers certainly your business will suffer the only way to protect your reputation because any other aspect you will protect your reputation that's why you're so centric around the customer if there's a complaint you will make sure you go that extra mile and make sure the customer is sorted similarly if an incident occurs your reputation will suffer and therefore that's another reason for you to focus on data privacy there's two other things and i wrap up after that ease of doing business most of you guys probably are looking overseas to expand your businesses being compliant to data privacy regulations will give you an advantage in market access will ensure if you are compared apple to apple with the competitor the fact that you have put in the time to look at cyber security to look at data privacy will give you an advantage uh, right now the uh, european union has demanded certain human rights protections on manufacturing facilities and there are organizations in sri lanka scrambling to make sure that those fundamental protections are taken place can you imagine if tomorrow the gsp plus was tied to data privacy that you couldn't do business with the european union if you are not having proper data privacy standards there are organizations that have come under that umbrella and white listed as suppliers you will be most of the time considered a control uh, processor under the act because you will some way or the other inadvertently deal with a maybe a massive company's data uh, jayanta mentioned payroll there are other services i'm sure as smes you guys provide and because of that you have to fall under the umbrella of a larger organizations data privacy program and sometimes suppliers are blacklisted because they don't conform to those standards i i personally advise few organization who have gone through that situation so certainly that's another thing that you need to look at um, in conclusion 
don't do compliance for the sake of compliance. Because there are so many advantages to it. And if you are just here to tick a box and just get that out of the way, that really won't serve the purpose. And like I said, your compatriots in Australia will tell you there are real world consequences to it. I look forward to your questions in the panel discussion. Thank you very much.